Hello everyone, Saqib Khan from the Spanish and Bridge and Seismic School. Today I want to talk to you about how to calculate the moment resistance of a pre-stressed eye girder cross section which is composite with a concrete deck and is exhibiting rectangular section behavior. It has bonded tendons. The idea is to give you a flavor of the type of things we're going to be talking about in a lot more detail in our courses uh, and in our upcoming talks and more than that what I want to do is ask you to start to develop this type of thinking where you're just not just relying on the code formulas sure enough the codes give you formulas what can one could go and apply them in a rather blind fashion but that is not very helpful worse now there are a lot of softwares available that will do the design for you or purport to do the design for you and that can be a bit dangerous especially early on in your career because it is a bit of a black box you throw things in you get numbers out and it's not very good for you to to work that way because you don't tend to develop the feel for different things um, as you progress in your career so I have I have taken a, a rather um, simple topic um, two things that I want to focus on uh, are as follows. One is to be able to understand the mechanics of the problem and if you haven't gone back and, and uh, thought about the reinforced concrete mechanics I would encourage you to brush up on that. I'll just briefly touch on all of this uh, in, in the next few minutes. Um, and then be able to draw these out. Once you draw these out, once you're able to form a picture of the behavior of the mechanics of the problem, it becomes really easy to even arrive at the code formula yourself from first principles and that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to explain a couple of things here and then apply some simple statics rules uh, that we learn early on at university to come up with the moment resistance of this section. So the first thing I would say in this regard is this is a composite section. The codes do give us the width of the deck which has to be accounted for in our composite section. That's the, the BE, the effective width of the deck. And then you have this eye girder sitting underneath. The deck will have some rebar. I've assumed it to be lumped at this point with a total, ma uh, with a total area of A prime S and a distance of D prime S from the top fiber of the, of the deck. There will be a number of tendons down here, assuming this is a positive zone. And I have again lumped the total area, I've called it APS. And this is the centroid of the area of the tendons. Its distance from the top of the deck is, the, is denoted as DP. Similarly, there will be some distributed rebar down here, which I have accounted for in a lump manner as AS, and its distance to the extreme fiber uh, or the top of the concrete deck is ds. So let's look at the strain diagram first. This is the strain diagram for the cross section. Our basic assumption is that the ultimate capacity is reached when the concrete reaches its ultimate compressive strain and the different codes will give you different values but they vary somewhere between 0, 0, 0, 0.003 to 0, 0.0035. The red line denotes the plastic neutral axis, that is when everything is cracked and things have reached uh, to the point where you're looking at the ultimate limit states. Of course your neutral axis starts somewhere here and then it progressively moves up to maintain equilibrium. The depth of the neutral axis is C, the strain in the rebar at the bottom is epsilon s and the strain in the pre-stressing strands is epsilon ps. This is the stress diagram. And here we start to look at the stresses in the different components. <coughs> the first component drawn in black is the stress diagram for the deck concrete which is going to be in compression a part of it is going to be in compression. Now, if you look at this shape, it is drawn as a parabolic shape. You could use any shape that, um, that ties in well uh, and agrees well with the uh, test results. The codes usually simplify this uh, and give us some parameters to turn the parabolic block into a rectangular block, 
which is much easier to deal with. Um, and that we do using the factor alpha 1 in case of, uh, of the Canadian Highway Bridge design code. So alpha 1 times F prime C, which is the design strength of concrete, gives us the, the width of this block. Of course, phi C is the material resistance factor which we apply. And then the depth of the block, because it's rectangular, its area is, is uh, matched on to this parabolic shape. It's going to be shallower. It's going to be as deep as A, and that's given by another factor, which you multiply with the C to get the A. So beta 1 is that factor. Then we have the stress in the rebar up at the top. We're assuming that the rebar at the top is yielding. Then we have the stress in the strands, which is shown as FPS, and the stress in the rebar at the bottom, which is FS, and again we're assuming that it is yielding. Now because we're talking about rectangular section behavior, the assumption is that the plastic neutral axis is within the deck, and that's why the top is a rectangular section. If this is within the flange, which is quite possible, or maybe in the web, which is quite unlikely, <clears throat> then we're looking at a T section behavior, and that's uh, a topic for, for another time. So, moving on from the stress diagram, we can draw the force diagram. And this is how I would like you to tackle some of these problems and think about some of these issues, is break them up into smaller parts, try to understand the mechanics of the problem, the mechanics of the material, understand the strain, the stress, and the forces, and then we can apply the simple statics principles, which I will do in a moment, uh, to get the moment resistance of this section. Now over here, CC is the equivalent force that this stress block represents. That's the force, that's the compressive force in the concrete deck. CS is the compressive force in the steel because we've assumed it to be above the plastic neutral axis it is going to be compressive. Down here we've got TPS which is the tensile force in the pre-stressing um, strands and TS is the force in the, the rebar, the reinforcement at the bottom. So now we're ready to use the two equations of equilibrium that are available to us for this case and I'm going to apply them in a systematic manner to then have us arrive at the moment resistance. Now I'm doing this symbolically but it's important to do it this way first to understand the mechanics of the problem. Afterwards of course you're going to be dealing with numbers and you won't have to worry about um, the, the derivation. It's always good, however, to be able to arrive at results on your own. So let's apply the first equation of equilibrium, which is sigma fx equals to zero. And now I'm going to be only looking at the force diagram, because we have synthesized all this information, and we're down to the forces and moments at this point. So on this, there are no vertical forces, so we're not worried about sigma fy. The third equation of equilibrium is, is not very useful or, or meaningful in this case. So starting with sigma fx equals zero, we can see that we have TPS acting to the right, then we have TS acting to the right, we have CC and CS acting to the left, so they show up with negative signs. Now I can write this as CC equals TPS plus TS minus CS. And now I can substitute the values. So let's write that. It's going to be the stress, which is uniform, multiplied by the, by the area under the stress. So I will get alpha 1 phi C F prime C multiplied by A multiplied by B E. So alpha 1 phi C F prime C is the stress magnitude. The area under the stress is this wide and this deep. So B E wide and A deep. And that's how we've arrived at this. Then we have that equal to TPS, which is the tensile force in the strands. And that we can write as PPS, APS, FPS, which is simply the area multiplied by the stress, multiplied by the material resistance factor, plus PS, AS, FY, 
minus phi s primed minus phi s a s primed f y. Okay, so these two terms are simply the a s, which is the area of the steel down here, multiplied by s stress, which is f y, multiplied by the material resistance factor, and the same for the top. Now, out of this, we can calculate the value of A, which is the depth of the plastic neutral axis, or, sorry, that is the depth of the stress block. I can determine that by simply transposing the terms on the left to the other side, and I'll explain that in a second. I'll move away from the board. Okay, so A is simply obtained by keeping the right hand side as it is and then taking these other factors to the right hand side and it goes into the denominator. So you have alpha 1, phi C, F prime C and BE going into the denominator and we can calculate the value of A using this. So now for this thing to behave as a rectangular section we need to make sure that the plastic neutral axis is within the deck. So you can calculate C as A over beta 1, and it has to be less than or equal to the thickness of the deck, which is right here. Okay, if that is not satisfied, then you're into the T section behavior, and these calculations are not going to be valid. Then we have to think about things um, in a, in a different manner. Okay, so now the other equation that I'm going to use is the sigma m about the compressive force, centroid. And I can use any line along this section and sum the moments of the forces about that line to get my moment of resistance. I'm just choosing cc. In this case, you could write it about the plastic neutral axis as well. Uh, but let's just try and write it about the cc. So once we sum up the moments about that point, that will give us the, the moment resistance of this, um, of this system. Okay, so let's start with the TS, then we'll go to the TPS, and then we'll go to CS. We will not have CC contributing anything because the moment is about CC and it has no lever arm about its own line of action, and therefore it's going to be emitted from the calculations. So first I take TS which is given by phi s, a s, f y, and its lever arm to this point c c, which is really a over 2 from the top, is going to give, be given by this d s, which is the distance from the centroid of the steel all the way to the top, and then minus a by 2 to get us to the centroid of the compressive force. After this, I have the T P S and I can write phi P S A P S F P S multiplied by D P minus A by 2. That's the lever arm for this force. Last but not least we have the C S. Now be mindful that when we are looking at C C T S is generating a counterclockwise moment TPS is generating a counterclockwise moment, but because CS is the other way and is lower than the centroid of CC, it is going to generate a clockwise moment, and therefore we have to have a negative sign in this case. So here we get phi S A primed S F Y times D primed S is its distance from uh, or to the extreme fiber and minus a by 2 will put us at the centroid of the compressive force. So here we have the expression for the moment resistance of this composite girder. So again two things to be mindful of is that we assume the plastic neutral axis is in the deck. We have to check that. We also assume that this rebar is yielding. Afterwards uh, we have to go back and check it to make sure that that is indeed the case. And you can do that if 
you put this value as 0 0.003 for example and do the strain compatibility and again I would encourage you if you haven't looked at that that sort of stuff in a while to go back and and refresh yourselves so just to sum this up uh, the type of thinking we want you to develop is to not just rely on the codes blindly we want to be able to synthesize the problem in this case the synthesis meant that we understood the behavior at the ultimate limit states and what that implies is we understand the strain diagram, the stress diagram, the force diagram then we can easily go back to our first principles of statics the sigma fx equals zero and then we apply the sigma m about the centroid of the compressive force. Again I could have written this expression in terms of uh, the moment about the plastic neutral axis all four forces would have shown up this expression would look different but if you were to calculate the moment of resistance of course you would get the same answer so thank you very much for today's lesson and I will be seeing you soon thank you